Well, as we know, Hadoop is great for storing massive data volumes, and it does that using HDFS. And this is pretty good for structured data, and it's really good for unstructured data. It's batch-oriented, you really can't do interactive query operations, which means that very often we need to move that data somewhere else, or at least a summary of that data somewhere else, so that we can support those kinds of interactive queries where users want sub-second response or one-second response, things that we normally aren't going to expect from a batch system. And that's where Scoop really fits in. We can use it as an ETL tool to copy data from HDFS out to our SQL databases, where our users that are doing interactive queries and expect that kind of response time can get at it. We can also use it to import SQL data into HDFS, which we might do if we're archiving data, or if we're going to analyze it using a query on read kind of a paradigm. Let's consider a conceptual example of how Scoop works. So let's say that we have a job to generate some summary data from our HDFS system. For example, maybe we have web logs from our web server for every single request made to the web server, but we don't like to store that in the data warehouse. It's too much. So we store it in HDFS, and we have a script that runs a Hadoop job to generate summary data. Maybe that data is daily totals by page, something like that. In the last line of that script, we might have a scoop command. So we send scoop a command like copy some summary data, put it up in the SQL server. MapReduce doesn't understand that, so scoop has to generate a Java program to create the data that Scoop's looking for. And it submits that under the covers. Again, we never knew about that program that's completely invisible to the end user. Scoop's generating that. Hadoop does receive the Java program, knows what to do with it, and runs through the MapReduce process as usual, might be having this um, Java program sent out to a thousand nodes, who knows. When MapReduce is done, it sends the data back to Scoop. Scoop then translates that to something that looks like a table and sends it through a Scoop connector, which is a Java class that we've installed on the MapReduce cluster. That data will pass through a JDBC driver that knows how to talk to SQL Server and update a table. 